Are your door cards ratty, old, falling apart, flapping around like an old wizard's coat? Well, today on this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we're going to show you how to fix them. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. It is really common when you've got an older car or an imported JDM Nugget that these are wet, destroyed, or they stink of soy sauce, bong smoke, and sweat. So there are a bunch of options of how you can replace and fix them, and my good friend Marty is gonna show you exactly what you need. Now this is a really cheap, easy, and rewarding way to update the interior of your car. There's a few different ways to do it. You can reuse the cloth that comes on your trims if it's in good enough condition. You can make new cloth, or you can do something cool like paint it, manga bomb, do whatever you want. Now to do this job, you need some essentials. In our case, we need some glue. You can get spray adhesives. You can also get adhesive that you can go put on with a brush. Um, and the most important part is to remake the actual trims themselves which usually look like that and are usually broken or ripped or repaired with sticky tape, you're gonna need some material to do that with. Now in this case, you can go to the hardware shop and get some melamine board. You can also use MDF, but it's not great when it gets wet. So you can use melamine. You can also, if you wanna do something crazy, use something like plastic or a core flute, um, which you can also cut out. That's waterproof, which has some benefits. And if you're just gonna paint it and throw it on, that can work really well. In our case, we're gonna use some material that's specifically made to redo your door trims. This is sent to us by a friend of ours who also can laser cut them. Um, you can actually get these made out as templates. You can template up your old one, send it to them, and they'll chop it all out. In our case, we're gonna do that ourselves to show you the process. So we have material that's also melamine, but it's the exact right thickness that works perfectly on the car. And now, Marty's gonna show you what tools you're gonna need. These are the tools you're gonna need. You need some trim removal tools to get the door trims off. These things work really well to get the plastic plugs out. Then you need to make templates from your old ones. You can use paint or a pen. We'll show you how that works. This is a hollow punch set, which you can get from Super Cheap Auto. It allows you to make clean holes in your new material. Drill bits don't work so well. We'll show you how that works a bit later on. Um, you might need some scissors to cut the material material out if you're using new material, um, brushes to glue on the adhesive, staple guns come in really handy, uh, a jigsaw also to cut out your new sheet for your door trim. We've also got this plastic weather shielding that goes inside the door before the trim goes on to stop the trim being ruined. And to install that properly, you also need a heat gun. Uh, this is the new 18 plus Ryobi heat gun, 15 minutes of use on a five amp battery, LED light, 460 degrees of temperature, which is excellent, nice and spicy. And it also comes with a bunch of different adapters on the end like this for doing heat shrinking and stuff like that. And the cool thing is no cords, do it outside, working on the driveway, it's excellent. But for now, everybody, it's time to make some door trims. The first step is to jack up your car. Then you need to remove your door cards. Remove all the handles and switches and any speaker components. And then you can use a trim removal tool to pop off the clips around the edge of the door card. With that done, gently remove the door card, making sure there's nothing still connected behind it. So it's at this point that you can start getting creative. You don't actually have to put this factory stuff back on your door card. You can go to a material shop, you can go to a printing shop, you can print out stuff, you can have photos on there, you can have manga comics on there, you can pretty much do whatever you want. We're trying to keep this car kind of OG because it's been in the Mighty Commons family for so many years and we're trying to bring it back to its original and former glory. So we're going to try and unpick this as carefully as possible. Then we're going to show you how to remake this. Now, I don't know if we told you in the tool section whether you're going to need a screwdriver, but you're going to need a screwdriver. And the next step is we're going to remove all the door handles. We're going to take everything off that is attached to this card, remove all the clips, and then we're going to carefully unpick all of this so that we can put it on our new backing board. Gently remove the covering from your existing Festi door card, also removing any clips and parts that are still attached. Taking it nice and easy will ensure you don't rip anything, but if you're replacing this with something new anyway, just go to town. But look after the door card, because we're going to be using that as a template. Okay, so... That is the door card material now removed from the door card. You can see why we're replacing this. You can see all the water damage down here. You can also see where some of the clips are is completely destroyed. So this has been being held on just with gaff tape. Now, when it comes to your material choice, you can see here from the factory, we've kind of got this 
two-tone thing going on here. And down the middle, this is actually heat sealed, almost kind of like a, a vinyl weld that's kind of down the middle. Now that is something that's gonna be really hard for you to do at home. So if you are getting rid of that as well and you're replacing it with material, you're probably just gonna to have to go with one kind of material. If you wanna go for the duo tone, you might be able to get a trimmer or something to do it. But if you're at home and you're DIYing, you're just gonna to have to get one bit of material to go over the whole thing. So we're gonna carefully put that one aside. And the next job, is to go ahead and show you how to remake this bit. Look how manky it is. Absolutely grot. But now we show you how to make a new one. Rig up some bodgy repairs on your old door card to try and get it into its original shape. You may need to use some cardboard and tape to get it perfect, but just like painting, the success of this fix is all in the prep. There are companies who specialise in making door trims who can cut all this out for you, laser cut. That's how this chop logo has been done, just by laser cutting a little bit into the material. Now you can make a template out of paper from this, send it to them and they'll chop everything for you. It's super neat, but today we're going to show you how to do it by hand yourself. Line up your old door trim over the top of whatever new material you've chosen to use and either trace it with a texture or even better, spray it with spray paint to get a more accurate outline. Paint over the holes for the clips as well as any other bigger areas that you need to cut out. Now you know that any area that's black needs to get chopped. We're using a jigsaw to cut out the backing card, but if you have a laser cutting machine or a CNC, use that instead. You can then tidy up the edges with sandpaper or a power file. These hollow punches make a clean cut in the thin material and allow the plastic plugs to hold the trim onto the door itself. You can also use these to make holes to insert your jigsaw blades for the bigger cuts. If all your old plugs are stuffed, you can buy new ones, but make sure they're the same diameter as the existing ones before you punch out the holes. It's a good idea to test the new trim on the door to make sure everything lines up. The bigger areas we still need to cut out are for the door speaker, the handle, the internal latch and the power window wiring. Another test fit and our panel fits nicely with everything cut out of it, so now it's time to retrim. So this is starting to look like a door trim again. Don't get too worried if your cuts or something aren't perfect because all these cuts, every single one, will be covered with a piece of trim or a piece of plastic or a door handle. Any super keen eyed viewers may remember that the mirror used to have these. The Japanese mirror used to have these on the top of the door trim and you can even see there's holes where these go. Now, these are optional to reinstall and the reason is we've actually painted the entire inside of the car and I really like the fact that you see the paint from the outside along the top where your arms go. The Australian mirrors don't come with these because of course the Japanese one's got way more trim. So I'm gonna go a bit hybrid and I'm gonna use the Australian style door trim but using the actual Japanese door trim and then use some of this, what's known as pinch weld to go across the top of the door trim, which will not only hold the material in place, it'll give it a sort of a nice soft edge. And so the next step is to glue this down onto the wood. It's all looking really good. Install the pinch weld, put it back on the door, attach everything back, and our door trim will be done. We're using a spray adhesive, which is perfect for door trims and roof linings. The trick to getting this stuff to work properly is to read the instructions and to wait. You need to give the solvents time to evaporate so you don't get big pools of soggy material stuck poorly to your wood. A good tip is to spray the adhesive one direction on the card and the other direction on the material that you're sticking to it. Once the glue has had time to become tacky, you can lay it down onto the backing card and smooth out any creases. We're then using contact adhesive on a brush to stick down the edges. This also needs time to get tacky, so apply glue to both sides, wait at least five minutes and then stick them together. The next step for our trims is to apply some pinch weld rubber that you can get from the hardware shop. It comes in many shapes and sizes and helps finish the top of the trim. While we've got the door apart, we're going to install some new plastic weather shielding inside the door. This stuff often gets more and more manky and the plastic rips and the glue hardens up. You can buy kits like this with enough product to do the whole car. Run the adhesive around the edge following the original lines and then lay the plastic sheet over the top of the door. 
cut out any holes required for wiring, speakers, screws or door handles and then stick it down and trim off the excess. You can then use your heat gun to gently shrink the plastic which will make it sit tight onto the door frame. If you can, make sure the plastic's clear and then you'll be able to see exactly what's behind it which makes it easier to cut out the holes. Up till now I've been running a power window switch from a Suzuki Bellino which looks rubbish so I jumped on Import Monster and got myself a genuine TRX mirror power window switch off Yahoo Auctions. Rob hand delivered it and then went home to Japan. With the door trim now completely reassembled it can be installed back on the door. One down, three more to go. Before the re-trims go back on, I'm going to spray some cavity wax which will help prevent against moisture which could cause rust. The rears are made the exact same way as the front and with the seats back in, it's starting to look like a car again with some mad remade door trims. And that's it, this job is done. It's often said that when you're working on projects, there's this 80-20 rule, which is the final 20% takes 80% of your time. And certainly that has been the case with this mad little mirror, but that is an excellent upgrade that you can do at home. And now the windows are working as well. It's that sort of in-between of upgrade or mod, depending what you want to do. If you want to just do it for fun, that's cool. You can do all sorts of designs, different materials. In our case, we're trying to restore it. And the idea of restoring an early 90s car is, is a funny one because stuff like this was made so cheaply yes. that it's not really surprising that it sort of breaks away. But I'm really happy with the look of it with the, the colour-coded bit here. And then I've got the door handle back on. I've finally got a window switch, thanks to Rob. So she's starting to look like a normal car. So we're back to normal. Yes, as normal as it gets. Uh, so thanks for everybody who watched this episode. We hope you got something out of it. Uh, we do get a lot of messages from people saying they want to support the show. We don't do a Patreon or anything like that, but you can get merch from our shop like Mighty Car Mods t-shirts, lanyards, keychains, all sorts of stuff. You can get that from MightyCarMods.com and that helps support the show if you enjoy it. Thank you very much, Martin. It's time to get some Japanese tonight. It's just about, We're mixing it up. It's just about time we, uh, we took this mirror out. Is it? Yeah. I reckon we should take this and go get some Okonomiyaki or some takoyaki. What about? Or some edamame. Or racetrack. Or a kebab. Racetrack? What's a racetrack? Dude, this car at a racetrack. Oh, I thought a racetrack was a kind of food. Sure. What? Oh, this gets chopped at the racetrack. No, I get dude. it, I get it, I this get it. There's no way this Excellent. is getting chopped at the racetrack. Let's, but you, let's you are argue over some, some Japanese. Yeah, Japanese. Right.